Welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you for coming back. Hello, everyone. Sorry that I stopped and come back.、Um, but I appreciate that you're staying with me. Hopefully, wherever you are, things have become more. In Hong Kong,、um, we have some new coronavirus cases that are locally infected, which is kind of a bad news. <laughs> This thing is causing us all crazy.、Um, But I really hope that writing and doing calligraphy help you to stay calm. Maybe doing some painting make you feel better.、Um, I mean, I am not like perfectly okay sometimes, because there's always ups and downs. But I'm trying to pull myself up. <laughs> Now I just try and listen at podcast. Oh, cool! Thank you, Chloe. Thank you. Yeah, but I really. I really, really want to thank you guys for staying and joining me because I, I put some, you know, like time studying it and try to make sure that I want to give you some good information, and it's almost a very good way for me to, you know, study as well. Okay, oops, I'm showing a bit of my clothes. No, cool. So more of you are back. So we will start with the H. Now with the letter H, what I found is. Incredibly interesting. <laughs> There are many, many, many ways of writing the H, which I will show you, and、uh, I have a cheat sheet to to help me as well, because I don't want to forget.、Um, now, the first method that I use for many, many, many years, I will show you, is the most basic way of writing it. So, first of all, we would do the same double turn entry. So you start slightly above. The waistline, you come up and curve to your right and lift, and then you do a downstroke. This downstroke, you don't really want to press immediately. You want to come down a little bit and press and re relax. Okay, so it's like a really quick, quick um, how do you say um, a very short stroke in a way. Um, I will magnify it later, and from here. Curve up slightly above the top of the central shade. However, this upstroke hairline doesn't touch the A two, which is the top ascender line. Okay, and then you want to start with this is the the universal line of beauty. Okay, so you want to start from thin hairline curve. Up like that, and press, and finish with the ball terminal. Okay. Now, this is coming up. So this is the method that I use. You come up, I lift, I skip through the wet puddle of ink, I come out. Looks like they are matching on the same line. Slightly off actually. Now, usually. I will bend down. To be honest, I will bend down my head, as in、uh, using. I will look closer by bending, bending、uh, from my hip, so I can get closer to, to see the detail. Now, but because the camera is right in front of my face, I can't do that. So, ideally, is I want these two lines to look like they are on the same.、Uh, like connected. Okay, so if they're not, sorry about that. You come up. And then come down like a letter L, lowercase L, and lift. And when I come up, I don't want to rush into it. I want to come up with a hairline that this is called the exit stroke. And you want the exit stroke to be、uh, on the fifty-five degree slant. Okay, so you want to come up, curve, and up. Now notice this is your slant. You want to head towards the fifty-five degree slant. Okay, maybe zooming in will help you. Okay, like that. Now, 
there is a little synthetic shade here so you can add by following this curve and press like that so this is my method I will repeat lift This is your, you can call it capital stem as well, but there are many types of capital stem, especially this one. It is your, the, the line of universal beauty. Okay, so of course it will curl up and create this ball shaped terminal here okay so this is here but you notice this is less curvy it's a little bit a little bit more subtle you want to start from here jump follow the line come down lift and up come back here add the synthetic shade now notice the oval well, you have two parallel lines first. So this is the 55. Okay, this is also, of course, on the slant. Now, the oval, you will notice when you coming, this line coming up, it is an oval. You can think of it like the size of this oval or you can think about a larger oval too. Okay. And this which i forgot to mention sorry this shape here is part of an oval okay so that's the first method that i write now through practicing and studying and looking at other books there are many other methods now i'm going to show you in in fact this uh, scenario menu use this method to write as well so you will have coming up the same so nothing change like that now instead of starting from left to right in the Zanero menu it will come down lift come up you do like a letter L first so you come down first now the benefit of doing this is you can estimate the distance because I know that a lot of you if you curve and then swing come down usually the gap between the two lines that should be parallel it's wider right so by doing the the downstroke here it helps you to predict or or how do you say like to to judge how the the gap the measurement here first now once you have come down and then you go up you will finish the rest so there are many ways so one is you starting again from here lift come up here now you can do a down stroke here which also included that little shade so you don't have to go back and add the synthetic shade all right so i'll repeat one more time this this sequence so you have double turn entry and ball terminal then you can do the l lowercase l is what i meant like that then you start from left one and two and stop you start from top make a loop add the shade and come in okay so in regards to the sequence i can write it down okay i just put an arrow like that okay so you have this is one method now 
I've also taken someone else workshop and he has a different way to write it so this is David Grimes way of writing which is this different so this is the same first this capital stamp will be the same okay usually what he did let me try to remember okay again you do the L shape first like that now he will do this coming down this way continuously to like that okay so basically all the way from right sweep through down this way I'll repeat one more time so let me show you again lift so you want to do the L first always think about the downstroke first lift up okay now you start here add the synthetic shape I actually add it a little bit too long and then you come all the way like that now you can see because I don't personally I don't practice this way it looks a little bit awkward um, especially this line is not very smoothly connected um, I am very used to writing the first method from here up come down and when I'm without the without the copy sheet guide I can do it quite kind of in a way in a nice distance I can control it quite well I don't make a very big wide uh, gap in the middle however if you consider uh, writing the first method and then you found that really difficult for you to estimate the distance you can start by coming down first I think this is the benefit when you come down you can really determine how wide they should be and then whether you want to start here and come down or from here all the way down like you know all these methods is really up to you but I think the best way is for you to experiment the methods and see whether uh, which one to see which one suits you more okay I have also seen um, like them many many types of L from old books as well so one of the sorry H not L the H now one of them if you see from this one okay this is book by uh, Tom Tommy Thompson okay look at this H it's really different so this is your um the double turn entry i believe okay so the shade is already you come here but it is shaded this way okay so the nib will be probably you do this by maybe doing an upstroke and then you turn your pen to add the synthetic shade okay because the shade has to come this way okay because you can't possibly unless it's coming down I don't really know how this uh, the sequence of this there's a few possibility also because this is a printer book so it's harder to tell the whether the ink you know like sometimes you can kind of guess by looking at the the overlap part of the ink you know this is all black so it's really hard to tell so there are different possibilities so you can come up and then add the synthetic shade after or you can do this way right anyway you come down and immediately turn into this shape here now notice in this book this H instead of an L like a lowercase L it has a curve which is like a C let us C, capital C and I mentioned here the H is formed of the I by adding the C you see I which is represented here this part is the I and this is connected to the letter C okay so there are many many ways to do this which is making it very interesting but the way I preferred 
we'll be keeping this straight meaning it keeping it like an L shape okay maybe just using this paper so we can see a little bit better okay Make sure that when you come up, this is not hitting each other. Mm -hmm. And then I will start. Like that. Now, another observation that I recently learned <laughs> is when you do the loop, the ascender loop, According to the Zaneri menu, this loop is slightly higher than this line. Okay, so this part here you can exceed just a tiny bit above the A2 line, the ascender 2. And then, of course, I add the synthetic shade. Okay, so in my copy sheet, I didn't do that. But if you want the exact details, you know, you can have this loop slightly above this line. Okay, the hairline here. I'll do one more time. I'll lift. You can, I'm not sure if I can do this nicely, but let's try. Okay, I'm still wobbling here. Okay, <laughs> it doesn't look very nice. It looks like a mustache. It reminds me of a, a seal somehow, maybe the whiskers of it. Sorry, so this is not a nicely done one. But the key point I want to show you is make sure if you want to be close to the Zaneri menu style, you can have to loop above this um, this hairline, okay? Yeah, I have problem with the, the distance because I'm not used to writing this method. So my method is going up and turn like that. But as I mentioned, you can explore, all right? Now, Hopefully you're not falling asleep. We have the last alphabet to share. So the last alphabet is letter K. It is one of my favorite because it is my name, Carlo, with a K. My sister's Callum with a K. I have my dog, Cola, with a K. All the <laughs> lots of letter Ks. And um, so what we start with is the same, first of all. Um, so you start from the hairline up to your right curve and lift come down and lift come up and lift this gap it's narrower than the left spacing okay and then you want to start with thin thicker thickest back to thin curve up more terminal and point okay this shape it's forming an oval itself okay you can also think about a, a little bit bigger oval but it is there is an oval going on here now this line i usually start here and turn and lift and i will come down from thin thick and back to thin so this is joined by a hairline here. Thickest point is right in the center, which is on slant 
and back to a point here so that I can connect the excess stroke which is the same as the H so you want to think about the oval when you exit okay so you want to think of this oval now coming back here and draw the ball shape and press sorry the ball terminal you can add the tiny 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 little bit of synthetic shade here on the loop it's very subtle okay I'll do one more time curve up lift come down lift come up lift thin thickest thin terminal press the next line lift notice this is your the S curve okay the line of universal beauty this one is here okay it's the line of universal beauty you come down you want to make sure you come down parallel Now one little details, oh we have to finish this, come back here, make the terminal and press. You also want to add the shade if you want to, like that. Okay, I, I usually just turn my pen when I add the shade. It was like this, but I turn the pen so that I can add that shade. Very, very subtle pressure on my index finger. Okay, now one little detail that you want to pay attention is for the K. Um, the if you have this uh, the waistline to the A one, if you divide it into half. Oh, sorry, I shook the camera. So if you have, if you have the midpoint. Okay, so I'm trying to draw, oh, where am I? Okay, sorry. I'm trying to draw the line in between the waistline here, the waistline here, and this dotted line, which is your, the A1, ascender one. I'm trying to div uh, divide it into half, okay? And you notice that this little loop sits right above um, the center point of this line because in your uh, Roman capital the letter K I think I brought it back wait in the Roman capital the K proportion has um, let me show you So I know we haven't, you know, we're not teaching Roman capitals here, but if you look at here, so if this is the square, the connection, it should be slightly higher than the midline, okay? The midline is here. So to simplify it, the top part, it's a little bit shifted higher, just tiny, 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 a little bit. So notice this loop will be above the midpoint if you're div dividing A1 and waistline, okay? So you can pay attention when you're writing the K, just shifting it slightly, slightly higher. And sorry, I smudged this ink. I'm gonna try again and write I'm on screen, yes. Okay. Lift, come down, come up. Make sure this is not touching all the way to, to, to the top. Because when you come down, it kind of cover it. You can do the K without the lift. 
tell yourself start with a point and add pressure and back to a point. Coming up, you want to think about the oval. If you want, you can add that. If you don't, you can leave it as a hairline, which is not really shown here because there's a, a print A2 line here. And add the synthetic shade. Okay. I said I was going to magnify this a little bit. So. I'm just making it bigger. Okay, so this will be the magnified version. You want this line closer to the waistline, which is lower, and you come up, curve. Now here, to draw it, little bit more you see this is starting with a point let's see if this is the central shade so this is here what you want is your nip to start with the point and then you add the pressure and come down and then you meet back at a point like that okay so you can practice shape like that i'm making a bit big but usually you can do a softer a smaller one, okay, like that. So hopefully that will be helpful. And um, now, is there any questions? <laughs> I I I hope it was clear. And let me do a quick recap. I think last time was quite helpful when I do this. It's, I will do using without ink because it helps when you have no ink. Um, I'm gonna just focus on looking at the detail here. Okay, now we came. This is a summary part. So if you if you have listened to all of it and if you still want to stick around, you can. And if you have to go to bed, which I understand because it's heading to almost 10 p.m. in Hong Kong, <laughs> which I also understand. Um, but I thought it's nice to do a quick recap so you can get to like summarize your learning as well. So in your um, a standard guideline paper, you will have an X height, right? This is represented by this spacing here, the X height, the height of this X area. Now. This is called a waistline, which is here. And you have a center one, a center two, going upwards. This is your baseline. This is the ground level, okay? This is what I call in my classes. This is the ocean. Or you can call the soil underground. D1 and D2, the center one and the center two, okay? And when we have a capital letters with the double turn entry, you will sit your double turn entry around this area. So first of all, when you start with the upstroke hairline, you want to start slightly above the X height, so above the waistline. You come up and curve to your right and lift. Now the second stroke is a down stroke. The down stroke it's the central shade, the shaded area, right? So you want to start from no pressure and slowly adding and reduce the pressure so it go back to a point like that. And you lift. Now the key part is make sure this 
center uh sorry the top of the center shade or this curve here don't go over this part a okay don't go over a now how you find a it is just a division between a1 and a2 uh, in textbook you can call whatever you can call c or d but i just use the alphabets i named it so it's easier for me to talk you through and notice the bottom of the central shade should never exceeds or go end or below do not end below the b okay so notice when i come down i will never go down below b it will looks really awkward okay now the next one is your upstroke you come up curve make sure you fit into the oval here there's a tiny little ball shape here you curve and come up pointing towards the slant you kind of head towards the slant and notice you end above the a line okay it has to be taller than the a line however it doesn't touch the a2 <laughs> now there are exceptions if you touch the a2 sometimes that's okay because you have a downstroke here you know let's say a v it kind of cover it up but usually i will tell myself i will stop just below the a2 line like that okay so the last important point is you want to notice that the c distance it's a little bit wider than the d so you want to curve a little bit more dramatic here come down lift and curve a little bit softer so that you have a distance that has a C is wider than D. Hope this is clear. Now this is uh, the double turn uh, entry, which is like an entrance for V, W, H, K, and C, or you call it Z. Now let's move on to the second alphabet. Sorry, this is the first alphabet. Um, so using the same concept, I'm not gonna repeat too much, so you can watch. You lift. I'm making this to let you know where I lift. I usually don't do so dramatically. Okay, and lift. When you're coming up, you movement. Don't go like, don't go like stepping into the, the shade. We don't do that. You kind of like remember to keep your hand really soft, and kind of thinking about an oval. Okay, so your hand is in a movement. However, it just lifted the page. So I don't do like a straight line, okay? It's very nice and curved and almost lifted as I'm still moving. Then you will find the, ha the hairline will be much lighter in that way. Now the second line is a downstroke after the double turn entry. You want to start with the hairline first. So start with the hairline. So this is on the 52 degrees slant. And you come down slightly curve to your left a little bit to your left and back to the right it's so subtle and ends back in a hairline back onto the 52 55 degree slant sorry 55 52 is for Spencer <laughs> okay so you have this point here it's a hairline HL and this point is a HL this is pretty much vertical, but it has a tiny little bit of curve from left to right. Okay. It's almost not really showing on this diagram. This is using an illustrator to put it together. Um, when you're writing, you should have a tiny curve, um, which I'm trying to find it. Okay. So I have an example like that. Do you see there is a curvy, a little bit curve, and to like that. Okay. Anyways, the next one is your upstroke. So you want to start your upstroke above the baseline to avoid the ink pooling. Okay, and you want to start it away from this wet ink here, and then going up. And curve slightly to the right of the slant and make the ball terminal lift 
and press. The ink will come down from your eye or the vent here and will fill in this ball terminal. Now it is very very important that you keep this ball terminal consistent throughout your alphabet. You know, no matter if you're writing the letter A from last class, A M N, or the V W H K, all have the ball terminal, right? So make sure it's about the same size. You want to keep it consistent. So when you look through from a natural distance, it has um, like the same consistency. Okay. And this will almost look like the ending of a letter N. So look, look at this line here. It's uh, coming to my end here. Okay, it's like the end of the the end. Okay, it's a very kind of similar kind of up and turn to your right and make a ball terminal. Okay, now W. So next one is your W. It's essentially super similar to your V. You want to start with slightly above the waistline, lift, press, back to a point, lift, come up. You won't, don't want to hit too high, you want to hit about here. This point will be higher than the top of the shade. So come up, lift, start with a hairline, meaning zero pressure on your index finger if you are having a triangle hold. Okay. Sorry. So you want to start from a thin and slowly adding pressure, swaying a little bit to your left and to your right and back to a thin line. It is pretty on slant. You can see I show you the slant here with the red line. Now lift, do the same as the V next to uh, above the baseline and kind of away from the ink, the wet ink here, the thick shade. Start here, slowly curve to your right one more time okay and lift again you want to start with a thin hairline now this time you want it to be slightly off slant notice that this line here is slightly to my right side meaning it's a little bit more from this you want to add more like that from this you want to angle it a little bit like that so remember what I mentioned is you can use two methods. Either you turn the page clockwise by turning clockwise. Oh, sorry, I'm off page. One more time. So I will turn the page clockwise. Okay. Or I can shift my hand like that. Okay. I wrote down pivot your left, no, pivot your side of the palm so it's slightly anti-clockwise okay you kind of like i guess it's kind of hooking up your hand right so from here to here very subtle and you start from thin meaning no pressure on your index finger coming down adding pressure and then back to a hairline and lift this line should be a little bit more vertical than the first shade. Same thing, you start away from the ink, wet ink, you come up, curve to your right, draw the ball shape, and press. Okay, so that's your W. Now, let's quickly move over to the Z. Okay. Hi everyone, welcome, welcome. We are wrapping it up. Thanks for joining and thanks for staying for those. <laughs> okay, with Z. We start from a double turn entry. Lift. Lift. Curve. Lift. Then we have the line of universal beauty, S curve. From thin, thicker, thickest, back to thinner and thin make a tiny little loop and I will lift the loop it should has a teardrop shape right this is like a teardrop crying <laughs> we don't want to cry but it's like a teardrop shape and it touches the baseline okay this is your baseline here and after you lift you will tell yourself 
You want to start from a thin line, meaning I don't add pressure immediately. No, no. I start with a thin line, and I will come down. This is a descend the loop, and I will keep the shade on the right curve. And back to a thin point. One more time, thin. Gradually thicker. And thickest, kind of in the center, and back to a thin line. And to this point, I'll lift. Okay, and I will then come up. My excess stroke. Some people you can do it together. This is like an S curve. It's it's curve and curve. So. Okay, I'm making this line more dramatic, but this is a subtle version of this line. So you can think about like an infinity sign or number eight, or you can call this the uh, the line of universal beauty because this is technically forming an oval, forming an oval, and have a part which sit right on the slant, right? Okay, so. You come up. You can either lift, or you can continue. Depends how、um, flexible your your wrist. It really depends on your muscle memory, as in whether it's really well developed or not.、Um, so some people can't stretch a, a a a full range. It takes some time. I have a tiny tiny hand, and so it can stretch quite high from here. You can see I can stretch quite high, and I think it's by practicing and really mindfully practice, right? So you know、uh, when to move your arm, when to use, you know, the finger. Anyway, that's kind of another topic, really. Okay, so you add the synthetic shade. You come here, press. So I have the shade here, and the synthetic shade. You come down, at, on right this area, very subtle. This. Shade. It's just make the alphabet a little bit stronger and let look less weak, as we mentioned earlier. Um, help balancing the alphabet. Okay, so that's C. Now let's look at the H. Now we have two more alphabets. If you have any questions, please let me know, or if you have any feedback, you can put it on. Now, in the Zanari menu, we talk about the H is higher, slightly higher. So I have made this diagram a little bit higher. So starting with a double turn entry, lift and lift. You curve up and lift. You then do the second is the line of universal beauty S curve. Or capital stem, lift and press. The ink will fill in this ball terminal. And the next one, you want to do the upstroke. This is the, my method. So I will start from here. I skip through. I skip through the wet ink, and come up. Oh, sorry, I don't skip because there's nothing here, right? So I will come up here, skip, and I continue. And come down slowly, adding the pressure. Now my brain would be telling me that it come down on slant, meaning this is on the slant. And I will start to reduce the pressure back to a point, and I lift. And when I exit, I will remind myself I exit with an oval in mind. Okay, so this is my oval, or it can lead into a larger oval. Okay, so that's. So I will come back to add the synthetic shade. Yeah, because I was coming up, and I'll add the synthetic shade. Okay, so that's how I will write it. Now, if you remember, we talk about other method, but you can um, uh, maybe rewatch the video if you want. Okay, so I want to show you the way I do it, that I feel comfortable. Now make sure this is like parallel. One this line, this shade, and this shade is making sure they keep parallel. Okay. What else is important is if you want, you can bring it higher. You also find it easier when you bring it higher. Okay. The loop here goes a little bit above the A two line. 
okay I don't want to say oh measure how many mm to go above I think it's kind of crazy if you want to be too super detailed I I was talking to my colleague Dicky a lot about you know after studying all these alphabets and trying to share with you guys I mean I know the the details here it's a lot but I think because as an educator it is important for me to know these so that I can share kind of accurately and kind of like rely on multiple uh, sources but I think for your personal practice I don't think you tend to need to okay let me rephrase I think for a person who may not be teaching or may not be you know uh hosting workshops it's more for your own personal you can have this in your mind you know this but when you're doing your own style you don't need to necessarily apply every single detail because if we are writing the way that i'm showing you and then it kind of end up like writing like a robot and it's kind of pointless because we are doing handwriting and for the sake of like the individuality right so <laughs> i hope this is not contradicting of what i'm teaching but i want to say to you uh, there are rules but you can also be a little bit looser you know there are parts where you really really need to focus on but there are parts that you can also skip it or create your own style okay but i think as a beginner um i still consider myself not a complete beginner but like still obviously not have like many many 10 you know decades of experience um so still quite new in this uh style i think for me you know having a good solid foundation will really really help you when especially later on you want a freestyle you want to be like um creating completely personal um style anyway i hope you get what i mean now let's do the k i think i did the h right yep okay let's do the letter k that will be the last of today so double turn entry start a little bit above the waistline okay you can think with me every part i talk you think with me because this is how you can study as well sometimes you don't have to write you just have to understand and think about the line so that next time when you write you apply what you learn onto your writing and that will really help you to improve so start from a little bit above the x height meaning the waistline okay curve to the right and lift and then you start thin adding pressure and back to thin to a point notice the top should not go above the midpoint here this should not go down below this line or below should not go down below the midpoint as well okay then you curve and lift then you do the second stroke which is the line of universal beauty adding pressure reduce immediately now because you want a gradation right so you want to start to reduce the pressure back to your hairline very light pressure almost no pressure and draw this and then you press the ink should be able to fill up this ball terminal okay the ink will come down and fill it up now the second stroke you start from here press from a thin line make a curve a tiny little loop here and lift and i will think about coming down first there are two things in my mind i'll come down and it's coming down parallel not at an angle and i don't want to add pressure immediately i want to remind myself that i have to be light on my index pressure so it's thin thicker or thickest here back to a point and lift then from hairline exit thinking about the oval okay now I'll come back I can add the synthetic shade okay and I can add the the ball terminal because I didn't draw this right remember I come like this I think maybe some people will start here first but I this is the method I use and I found it more 
uh, easier to control the, the ball terminal is by coming back here, drawing this terminal, and ink in. Okay, so that's how I write the letter K. As I said, there are many, many ways I have seen, you know, the K starting even from here and up and then do the downstroke. But I think this is a little bit easier to control if you start here. Okay, now with letter K, two important, important information that I cannot emphasize more enough is make sure you make sure this is on slant, come down. You don't want to go what? to the to this side okay i can demonstrate that and also what is important if you divided this bar into half about here about the center point okay i did not draw a good job i did not put a good job sorry i can't even speak <laughs> okay i can't find a eraser i do two seconds all right i got it yay now, if I have a middle line, okay, you notice this loop is slightly above it. Because as I said, the Roman capital, because all the capital letters or alphabets from Spencerian, Gothic, or Italics, you know, whatever, all these are based on the Roman capital, which is the essential of uh, the, the skeleton or the proportion is the the base for all the alphabets, okay? So in the letter K, it's um, the, t the top triangle, let's call this triangle, it's a little bit smaller, smaller than the bottom because you want to push this a little bit higher, okay? Now, I said I will write the K, the last one. Oh, where am I? <laughs> Okay, I'm here. Okay, I'm focused. So, I want to show you. There is some problem. Let me restart. When you do engrossa script, sitting posture, extremely important. Kind of affect how you write. You see the immediate difference. This is wider. This is narrower. This wasn't doing it right. Okay. I want this to be a little bit heavy. Now. Do you see? If the K has the angle that way, it looks off. However, having said that, there are traditional scripts that has this, but let's do the cor the more preferred way. Thin, thick, and you can come back to add that. Okay. So I can usually touch up. So I want this to be the same. That's better. And also notice that this can be a little bit lighter, meaning the shade is not as heavy as here. These are the primary. This is more like, um, you know, the secondary shade, you can call it. Okay. So I think that was it for me. I don't know. Um, let me hold the camera. So, oops. Do you guys have any questions for me? Oh, there are someone typing. Let me quickly scroll all the way up. <laughs> um, let me read it through. Sorry. Thank you for your appreciation. Someone said, appreciate the life. Uh, I really appreciate you guys being around. 
and I'm just going through to find questions. I, yeah, I think. Okay, there's one. When we connect, so Paru Hingwala. Sorry, how do I pronounce it? When we connect small letters, A E I O U, O and U, small letters, the U has to be a compound curve. Ah,、uh, it has to be like letter I. Okay, now, so I'm trying to understand your question, but because. I'm currently doing demonstration for capital letters, so I will steer away from the lower cases for now, because I will come to the lower cases after this whole series of capitals. Um, so I don't want to confuse anyone, or if that is okay with you, but I can try to understand your question and answer you individually, because the focus will be capital letters. Would that be okay? Because I worry that will be another half an hour to one hour of answering. Can I see the letter B again? Thanks. I always write the B. Now I am actually doing in groups. So if you have purchased the copy sheet that I have, you will notice I am not teaching B.、I、haven't taught B yet. So this is the group that I'm doing. Okay. So it's A M N. Last week I did it. Today I did this. So next Wednesday I'm gonna do I J, for group this group free, and I will do group four at the same time T F. So you will. So next week is this. So the next week in two weeks time will be P B R. Okay. Sorry, I'm not trying not to write your alphabet, but I will be explaining it. It is okay to make the strokes so separately, or you are doing them like that to demonstrate. Oh, this is a really great question. The method I'm writing is a engrosser script style. Engrossing engrosser script is lifting a lot between、um, the shade and the hairline. You will probably see some people when they write、um, like copper plate or engrosser. I mean, when they they usually say copper plate. I try really not to talk about the terms because there as there is a huge kind of like,、uh, how do you say、it? debate over the names. But I have been to an IMPF conference,、um, and I did talk to several、uh, calligraphers who are very 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 good in this field. We were talking about engrosser script and copper plate for like what's the difference and. He explained for forty five minutes, and after the explanation, he literally said to me, "Carlo, you know what? Don't worry about it. Essentially, copper plate and cross script and round hand are the same thing. Um, it is just how people termed things differently. Anyway, so my point is, for what I'm trying to do is, I would do a lot of lifting because by lifting, I can be writing stroke by stroke." So you really can have a better control of the thick and the thin line contrast. You can really think mindfully. You see a lot of people maybe、uh, writing continuously. I do that sometimes as well because when I'm doing modern style, you is you you're focusing on the flow. You know you're writing more connected connectively, yeah, connectedly.、Uh, however, if you do study and want to do more detail like this. By breaking down a stroke, by lifting, the pen will help you to create that detail. Okay, that level of detail, and it's not necessary that you have to lift your pen. It's really up to you. But this is the way I will show my students. Hope that helps、um, answering. No problem. Thank you for joining. Thank you for saying thank you. I always appreciate it. For those who are not familiar with calligraphy, um. Um, it is something worth trying. You know, you might just pick up a simple pen, nib, and paper, and write with us. Now it is towards the end. I have fifty five seconds, so I'm gonna say goodbye here, and we'll see you next Wednesday. If you have questions, just DM me directly. Maybe I'll look through. Um, I'll try to answer. Uh, the lowercase question earlier. Okay, because I will screenshot that. So. See you guys, and thank you for your support. Have a great evening. Bye, guys. Bye.